that our community is hurting because of this senseless act of violence. Now at five, new details tonight about the Rockford man arrested after a stabbing rampage left four people dead. Also, UW Regents will soon vote on a proposed tuition increase across all campuses. We'll share how much the cost of college could go up. And from rescue to recovery, and now a salvage operation, how investigators are transitioning their efforts after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. We're continuing our breaking news coverage tonight from Rockford, Illinois, where four people were killed yesterday in stabbing attacks on the city's southeast side. In addition to the four dead, authorities say five others were injured in the attack. The four people killed have been identified tonight. They are 63-year-old Ramona Schubach, 23-year-old Jacob Schubach, 49 year old Jay Larson and 15 year old Jenna Newcomb. Authorities arrested 22 year old Christian Soto, a Rockford resident. He has been charged with several counts of murder and attempted murder. The Rockford community remains stunned over these deadly stabbings as investigators try to figure out the motive behind the attack. Our Braden Ross is live across state lines tonight. She was at tonight's news conference with Rockford police. Braden, what is the latest you can share? Yeah, that's right, Susan. I would say stunned is absolutely the right word. We've spent a few hours in this neighborhood here where this took place. It's very quiet. A lot of families we've seen walking around, really people just shocked by what happened here and what unfolded. I'm going to step out of the way. You can see behind me. These are a few of those crosses that people, the neighborhood have, has set up to honor those victims for victims again. Now, we learned many more details today about just how this attack unfolded yesterday afternoon. Police say this all started at a house where a friend of Soto lived here in Rockford. In an interview with police last night, Soto said he was at this friend's house to smoke weed, which he thinks was laced with another drug that made him paranoid. He told police he grabbed a knife from the kitchen, which he used to kill 23-year-old Jacob Schubach and 63-year-old Ramona Schubach. His rampage continued after he left the house, attacking and killing a mail carrier and breaking into multiple homes. It's in one of those houses. Police say Soto attacked three teenage girls with a bat, beating one of them, 15-year-old Jenna Newcomb, to death. When you think about these four, they were doing what we all do, what you should all be doing. It's spring break. You have three girls watching a movie. I can't even comprehend that. Now, five other people were also injured in this attack. One person, a bystander who stepped in as Soto was attacking another woman, is still in the hospital today in stable condition. Now, Soto appeared in court a little over two, three hours ago now. Several family, several family members and some of the victims themselves were sitting in that courtroom. You could still see them visibly have injuries. Now, we are bond has not yet been set in this case. Soto is expected back in court early next week. We'll keep you updated as we learn more in this case. We're now reporting in Rockford, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. Braden, thank you. The stabbings are getting the attention of President Biden. This afternoon, he put out a statement reading in part, Jill and I were horrified to learn of the brutal attack carried out in Rockford last night, which took the lives of four people. We are praying for the families of those who lost loved ones and hoping that all of those injured make a full recovery. And a reminder to catch up on the stories of the day at a time most convenient to you with our Channel 3000 mobile app. Don't forget to turn on push alerts so you never miss a breaking story. To weather now, it was great to see the sunshine today, but temperatures were still a little bit on the cooler side. There is another round of rain that uh, will be coming with the weekend and Easter weekend approaching. Let's get a look at your first worn forecast with Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Hey there, Susan. Yeah, a bit chilly out there, but just a taste or a little bit more of this feel of spring on the patio. Less in the winds, the sun's out, the birds are all over. We've got the daffodils behind me and temperatures out there a little bit more mild or middle to upper 40s. Look at that 47 right now in Middleton. We've got a 47 in Boscobel, 48 now in Janesville. Average highs for this time of year, late March are right around 50 degrees. We got a 45 up in the Dells right now. So 
not bad. It's certainly not bad compared to the 30s and the really chilly temperatures we had just these past two evenings. One more kind of cold night tonight, low to mid 20s. But that's because we have clear skies and that allows the heat to go out to space and then warmer temperatures as we go on into your Friday. And Susan said showers. Yes, we do have showers in our forecast. The best chance in Madison for those showers are gonna be between, let's say, eight o'clock on your Friday night to midnight to the wee hours of your Saturday morning. That's the best chance of getting wet in Madison. And notice I'm emphasizing Madison. Not all of Southern Wisconsin is going to see this particular rainfall event. I track who gets it and who doesn't coming up. All right, thank you, Alex. Next week, the UW Board of Regents will vote on a 3.75% tuition hike for all campuses made under the recommendation of System President Jay Rothman. The vote is scheduled for Thursday. If approved, it would be the second straight year of tuition increases after a 10-year freeze. In 2023, tuition went up 4.2% on average. In a statement, Rothman says our university universities are facing challenging economic realities and students and parents should know that we plan to be good financial stewards. Investigators in Maryland continue to work to learn why a cargo ship lost power crashing into the Francis Scott Key Bridge early Tuesday morning before it collapsed. Six people are presumed dead. Two bodies have been recovered, but search efforts for the other four have been paused as attention turns to cleaning up the mess. Cole Higgins reports on what is now being called a salvage operation. We're now moving from a recovery mode to a salvage operation. Maryland State Police Colonel Roland Butler announcing Wednesday evening that recovery efforts for four people presumed dead after Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in the frigid Patapsco River are on hold. Because of the superstructure surrounding what we believe are the vehicles and the amount of concrete and debris, Divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. New traffic cam video shows what happened moments before that collapse. The data recorder was recovered from the ship Tuesday. National Transportation Safety Board investigators learning alarms went off 45 minutes after the ship left the terminal. The pilot sending a mayday call to shut down traffic. With dozens of ships headed toward the port now needing to be diverted, the focus is to rebuild. The reality is that for all those jobs and for all the commerce uh, that goes uh, through the Port of Baltimore, uh, opening that channel uh, is the priority. The collapse of the Key Bridge is a global crisis. The national economy and the world's economy depends on the Port of Baltimore. But extreme weather conditions are making recovery efforts for this disaster tough. I mean, it's cold. It's cold water. It's raining and uh, you have current. Uh, and all sorts of um, uh, waterway challenges. Restating Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg's statement, rebuilding won't be quick or easy. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Sam Bankman Freed will spend the next 25 years in prison after being found guilty of seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. Prosecutors say the 32 year old ran the FTX cryptocurrency exchange into the ground while lining his pockets. Analysts called FTX's collapse one of the largest white collar crimes of all time. Bankman Freed did face up to 110 years in prison, but prosecutors looked for roughly half that amount. Easter is this weekend and you some of you may be going to church across the Mississippi River in Winona, Minnesota is a majestic basilica that's welcoming everyone, even Wisconsinites. John Lauritsen shows us what makes St. Stan's in Winona so historically unique. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Even though you're a Packer fan, you still come to church. Hey, Amen. <laughs> In fact, four generations of Al Greenwood's family have attended St. Stanislaus Koska. The church is so big that no matter how many times Al comes back, he always finds something new. I still see things I've missed over the years. You know, when I look around and see things. What he's seeing are stained glass windows, marble pillars, and eye-catching architecture that dates back to 1895. That's when Polish immigrants completed construction. 
From inside, it's 125 feet from the church floor to the dome. How that dome got built in 1895 is quite the story. They built a ramp and had horses pull it up and they had to blindfold the horses because of the height. The story is that the, the ramp went all the, way, all the way to the Mississippi River. But it was all built to last. The proof came when the church was hit by lightning in 1966. The dome was, was glowing red hot um, and fire was billowing out the windows. Thankfully, firefighters responded quickly and saved it. These days, the higher up you go, the further back in time you go. Workers built much of this with a combination of wood and metal which historians credit for keeping the church in one piece. Are you surprised it's still in as good a shape as it is, at least parts of the church? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what, what building lasts 130 years? It's a big reason why the Pope himself gave St. Stan's special recognition. The Basilica means that it's a, been recognized by the Vatican as a special place. In order to become a basilica, you need to send an application to the Pope and the application starts with answers to 100 questions. It took Deacon Justin Green about a year to answer all those questions. Had to describe everything in the place, um, furniture, chairs, way in which we did things. But just six months after sending in that application, the Pope responded and declared St. Stan's a basilica. It's just a towering presence. You can see, you know, it's one of the first things you see when you see the skyline of Winona. And it's in the heart of a community. Another reason why the church received basilica status. It cost $85,000 to build St. Stan's, equivalent to about $100 million today. And as the basilica approaches its 130th birthday, its biggest fans say they wouldn't change a thing. People come from all over the world to, to, to see this basilica. You know, when they're in town, they, they stop here. You can see the dome from Wisconsin. The church was named after a Polish saint from the 1500s who was known for his goodness, holiness, and devotion. Leaders say parts of the church are starting to show their age a little bit, and they hope to begin restorations soon. Ahead of Easter weekend, Pope Francis continued the papal tradition of washing feet in a ceremony today. This year was a first. He washed the feet of only women. He washed the feet of 12 women in a prison from his wheelchair. Over the years, Pope Francis has washed the feet of women and Muslims, but never exclusively women. The ceremony commemorates when Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet the night before his crucifixion nearly 2,000 years ago. Well, Election Day is next week for Wisconsinites, and on your ballot are some important proposals that you'll want to know about before you head out to vote. Coming up, we'll share what's being asked in a pair of constitutional amendments. After an accident, don't say anything and don't sign anything until you talk to Gruber Law Office. Call us first. We'll help get you the money you deserve. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Catch the Bucks on broadcast TV when they square off with the Pelicans on your new local home for select Bucks games. Watch Giannis and the Bucks fly into NOLA to zap Zion and the soaring Pelicans. It's Dame time in the Big Easy. Bucks, Pelicans, on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Tonight at 7 on Television Wisconsin. This month, we're looking for 200 homeowners interested in getting a new fence. We're offering up to $1,000 off, plus an upgrade of up to 10 free solar caps. Our fences outlast wood 3 to 1 and are backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. Call now or visit the website for your new fence today. With dad's arthritis, he struggles with housework and bathing. So I called a grace. Yes, a grace. With their age at home service, dad gets the help he needs to stay independent at home. A grace, caring every step of the way. In a class three casino, you're playing against the house. So there's no guarantee a player has to win ever. And in a class two casino, the players play against each other and not the house. So someone always wins. So you're saying... He's saying if you want to win at something, you have to go to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, a class two casino where someone has to win. How about this then? Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. 
At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to work in the yard, tackle a project, or enjoy family time, we get you the right products at the right prices. Right now, rewards members get a free $10 gift card with $100 spent on estate fertilizer, like $10 off all new estate premium 4-in-1 lawn treatment with four benefits, crabgrass prevention and contact killer, broadleaf weed control, and lawn fertilizer all in one application. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. After an accident, don't say anything and don't sign anything until you talk to Gruber Law Offices. Call us first. There's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Jenna died saving her sister and her friend. We have the latest updates from Rockford after a man went on a stabbing spree in this neighborhood yesterday afternoon. What we learned from police today coming up tonight at 530. Our community is full of wonderful giving people. Tell us about the good you see. Go to Channel 3000 or post it using the hashtag do something good. I'll share your stories on News 3 Now. Let's do something good. Next Tuesday is Election Day here in Wisconsin, and while we don't have a competitive race in the presidential primary, there are a couple of important proposals on the ballot that Wisconsinites can vote for. Political reporter Will Keneally is here with more on what we can expect. Will? Well, Wisconsinites get the opportunity to weigh in on two constitutional amendments next week dealing with the state's elections. One question, should Wisconsin cities be able to accept outside money for their elections? And should outside contractors be able to help cities run their elections? Now, this has been something that conservatives have been working on since 2020. They say some of that money went towards the state's largest cities, which lean Democratic. Here's Will Flanders with the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. It was still more in some of the largest communities in the state uh, than it was in the smaller ones. Um, you know, I think if you get to the very smallest cities, those $5,000 grants went a long way, but everywhere in between sort of received less money disproportionately uh, than those big five cities that got the most, uh, most overall funding. Now, opponents of the amendment say that these could depress turnout, especially if the state doesn't help those cities pull off their elections. Now, this will be the last stop for those amendments. If voters approve them, they become the newest parts of the state's constitution. And we'll have more on this coming up tonight at 530. We will see you then, Will. Thank you. We all know the cost of living has spiked in recent years. That's just half the story. The whole story is worse because just living isn't the same as living comfortably, being able to afford basic pleasures and not living paycheck to paycheck. A new study from SmartAsset.com has determined the amount needed to live comfortably in 99 major U.S. cities. That number? A salary of $96,500, or roughly $235,000 for a family of four. Let's get a check on the weather now. With that sunshine, it did start to feel like spring outside. Feels like we're turning the corner. Yes, on. progress on the patio is what I like to say. <laughs> when I'm on the patio, Susan, those sorts of things occur. 40s today, not the 30s and that windy stuff. A little breezy, but better. Yes, better. One more cold night tonight. I promise a warmer Friday ahead. Those warmer temperatures ahead of this weather system will help bring a little bit of that fuel for shower activity on your Friday night. Let's plan the rest of your night tonight. 40s dipping down into the 30s. Clear skies. Gorgeous evening for a walk, bike ride, take the dog out. Just a little bit, little bit chilly to start off your Friday morning at 26 with a cloud or two. But those clouds will increase more on your Friday with highs up into the lower 50s out there. Let's track that a little bit more and the next chance of showers. And it said who's going to get it and who's not and how much. We can do all that here with our future track model. 26 again to start in Madison, 24 in Lone Rock and 26 in Janesville. So chilly start, but we warm up nicely. Where our highs are today, low to mid to upper 40s, we'll already be doing that at the lunch hour. Clouds filling in, maybe a shower, Platteville, Darlington, Monroe, and Janesville by 6 o'clock. The better chances of those showers, maybe a clap or two of thunder by the time we get towards midnight. Dells, Camp Douglas, Marquette, Green Lake counties, Madison, Monroe, Janesville, and points to the east. Notice how I'm kind of standing over southwest Wisconsin. Not a great chance right now, as it looks like it appears this storm is going to get its act together over southern Wisconsin as opposed to to our west. And that's why areas to the southwest not expecting to see much in the way of water 
and they need it because they were missed by this last weather system and our drought monitor is still targeting southwest Wisconsin with severe drought conditions better to the east so we need to send these raindrops to the northwest to help our friends but we do have more rain chances in the forecast Monday going on into Tuesday that weather system looks more widespread more of that consistent steady rain but it could have a couple wet snowflakes along with that too recap chilly overnight warmer Friday showers later on your Friday night Easter Sunday, I think is going to be mostly dry around 50. There's that wet weather system Monday going on into your Tuesday. Once that moves out of here, temperatures climbing into the 60s. Some indications we could be pushing 70 degrees later in our forecast. So that's some optimism there, folks. You know I have always something optimistic to say. Hey, traffic going at a decent speed here. 66 eastbound on 12, 12 eastbound 61 as you're heading over towards Cambridge, north and southbound at 70, and that's the speed limit, so that's good that we're going at 70. Down in Janesville, a little bit north, a little bit speedy over 70, but that's okay. And then as we head up towards the Wisconsin Dells, we're around 70 degrees, and Susan, nice night for travel out there. No rain, and the winds have lightened up. Good news. All right, Alex, thank you. If your bracket is completely busted, you're not alone. They call it March Madness for a reason. Coming up, we'll share how one Midwest teacher is using the tournament to teach her students about higher ed. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings, going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Save big money with these hot deals in Menards. All prices after 11% rebate. Colored wood mulch is $1.97. Get this folding sawhorse for only $9.99. Hop to Big Easter Savings. Easter lilies are just $5.99 each. Load up those Easter baskets with chalk or bubbles solution. Just 49 cents each. These hot deals won't last long. Hurry in before time runs out. Sign up for Menards emails to get more hot deals. Plus the weekly flyer right to your inbox. Save big money at Menards. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. We forge steel bars that hold up bridges, propel ships, and send rockets into space. But for years, China's been lowballing their prices, so it's been tough to compete. We can't let China steal Wisconsin jobs, so I wrote a law to require American infrastructure projects use American iron and steel. Tammy Baldwin got President Trump to sign her Made in America bill. And then she got President Biden to make it permanent. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. Tammy Baldwin has our back. Win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings, going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. You're watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. Well, get those brackets ready because tonight March Madness returns to WISC-TV with two games on our networks. In Columbia County, Illinois, one teacher is using the tournament as a teaching opportunity. Amanda Brennan shows us how this educator is taking basketball beyond the bracket. You have to really look and pay attention because it can get kind of messy reading the bracket. This yoga teacher is introducing her students to the world of bracketology. We'll just start with Yukon and Stetson. Who did you pick to win that? Yukon. Yukon. Okay, so you can put a plus one. Amy Kep is bringing the competition right into her classroom, each grade making a bracket and earning a point for each win they predict correctly. They won pretty big, didn't they? Yes. So far, we've gotten a pretty good winning streak. 
It's much bigger than just tallying up the wins and losses. That Look how close that game was, though, 100 to 102. I can throw in research, I can throw in math, I can throw in writing. I've researched um, Samford University, and I realized that there are the bull Bulldogs, and they've actually been a university for a very long time. I did Dayton University and Texas A&M. Plus, they're learning there's more to college than simply picking a school. I've honestly been surprised on how much the out-of-state tuition is because that's a big number. Each aspect of the project is truly a slam dunk for KEP. They love to talk about basketball. They love to talk about what's in the news. And this is a great way to bring current events into the classroom. Um, it's very fun because it's just like different than what you're usually doing. Illinois and Moorhead State. Illinois. Yes. No matter what, they're making sure the friendly competition between grades never dies. Um, it's been really fun. It's been really tight and it's been going off and on. So it could be anyone's game. I love that kid. That's how much fun. Here's a look at tonight's programming. We're moving News 3 now at 6 up to 5.30. And then immediately after, Clemson and Arizona tip off with a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. And after that game, you'll see Alabama take on North Carolina. After both games, stick around for News 3 now at 10, airing tonight at 11. Stay with us. Alex returns with a final check of your first warn forecast. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you two. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan, Available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 1-800-914-3131. Call now. Okay, everybody, help us decide, is this real or not? 7-Eleven has announced a new collection of sparkling waters, and one of them <laughs> will be hot dog flavored. The Big Bite Hot Dog Sparkling Water combines the taste of the iconic hot dog into one refreshing beverage, ketchup and mustard included. Okay, now here's where it gets suspicious. We're told more details on the availability of the Big Bite Hot Dog flavor will be revealed next Monday. Monday. You know what next Monday is, Alex, don't you? April Fool's That's Day. That's right. It's April 1st. That can't be real. That's too bad we don't have our friend Gary Canalti here right now because <laughs> yes, he loves his Chicago hot and dog. And he's a hot dog connoisseur. That's and, true. And I would be curious to what Gary would have to say about that. But Gary says, well, Alex, let's talk about the weather here. He's sitting on my shoulder. 26 <laughs> for a low temperature to start off your Friday morning. So chilly, but we will warm up into the lower 50s as we go on 
into the middle of your Friday. There we go. And then the shower chance that I've been tracking. Not everyone's going to see those showers. Unfortunately, Susan, areas over southwest Wisconsin might get missed. But keep tuning in. Hopefully we can increase those drops. Okay, thank you, Alex. Charlotte Deleste is standing by. News 3 Now at 6 airs immediately following this broadcast. Enjoy the basketball tonight, everybody.